Well, hey everybody, here we are. Um, this is going to be the first video in a whole series of videos where I rebuild the what I call the the threat library or the the petting zoo. Uh, the petting zoo comes from the name of a place in Nellis Air Force Base, where they actually have a collection of of real enemy aircraft and tanks and surface air missile systems and all sorts of stuff um, on display, so that you can go there and actually get a sense. You can you can sit in the cockpit of a MiG-29, of a MiG-23, you can um, walk all around an SA-6, you can put your hands on it. It's, it's so that you can actually get familiar with the system. I mean, and I'm just naming a couple things. They, the Petting Zoo has a ton of stuff. That's why they call it the Petting Zoo, and it's an interesting name. Um, and there's also uh, a couple courses you could take down there for what we call threat academics, where you really learn the insides and outs of of enemy weapon systems. Um, now, there's a lot of classified, you know, level information that people in in my line of work, formerly in the military, could take, you know, to become experts on these systems. But if you really want to learn from the from the perspective of of the other side, threat academics is a great course. Now, in our individual units, uh, we always have representations of enemy aircraft. Um, especially in where my last assignment was at Tyndall in a schoolhouse unit where we're training new people that are going to be responsible and all of this stuff. It really, it really helps. Um, it's not required, but when you're able to bring out a model and say, hey, this is, this is the threat we're talking about today, um, even, if it, even if you're just looking at it and you're able to reference this is an AA-10 Alamo, this is a 10 Chuck versus a, versus a 10 Alpha, and things like that, to put something tangible in front of them instead of just pictures on a slideshow or, you know, you really, like, let them... Let him see and hold it. We, we really, you know, it, it was it was a really cool thing. Um, and I was the non-commissioned officer in charge of weapons and tactics for a while. I also, I mean, there was other positions I, I worked there. But as the NCOIC of weapons and tactics, I decided I was going to build us our own little mini mini petting zoo. And uh, 172 scale was just a great scale to work in because it's not too big. It's not too small to really see details. And I built everything... Uh, and put it on some little wood bases I made, and I've got a video all about how to make those wood bases, but we'll get to that later. And uh, I had just a series of different aircraft, um, all representing modern threat countries, by the way, too. People like, you know, there were no Soviet air... Well, there were some Soviet aircraft, actually, now that I think about it, because to reference some older versions that, you know, aren't really flying anymore, but of different things. But, uh, you know, it was, it was fun for me because I got to build the models, and it was educational for everybody else. And you know what? Without fail, um, I used to say that's how we make people come talk to us weapons geeks. Because, uh, you know, a lot of the folks are a little intimidated to come by the weapons and tactics shop. Because they think that we're going to, like, you know, just out... We're going to geek them. We're going to... Uh, but, you know, weapons and tactics is also when you have a question about stuff, that's where you, that's where you come. And we worked behind a locked vault door, um, you know, because it's all... No phones, no electronic devices in there, you know, no windows. It was, uh, it was a nice way to get people to come over and, you know, hey, they want to come see the petting zoo, they want to see the models. And it starts cool conversations about, about work stuff, you know. Anyway, so I'm going to recreate that petting zoo for myself. Um, here is just, you know, kind of, uh, I'm out now, but I want to remember. I love the bad guy stuff. I love knowing about what they can do. So, and of course, there's some people probably sitting around the world that I've just totally funded going, wait a minute, bad guys? No, that's my stuff. That's our stuff. You're the bad guys. Hey, it's it's all depending on what side of the, the imaginary line on the map you you uh, you sit behind. But anyway, the very first one we're going to start with is the Su-30 SM because I, uh, you know, recently have done the Su-30 SM in 148 scale for a group build for a Facebook group I'm in, and I figured, why not? As I'm doing one, we'll do, we'll do another. And the Su-30SM is not a new platform out there, it, but it's a very effective platform. And I, I want to comment on the, ba the box art from this Zvezda kit real quick because, you know, sometimes uh, model companies just put something really just, just bleh on there just to look cool. They really did it right. You've got a Soviet naval aviation marked aircraft. You've got uh, a Navy um, P-8 Mercury. You know, so they're like, actually, they're not just putting random stuff up there. A lot, a lot of times they just like to put, you know, like like the plane and then, I don't know, the, some crazy background that doesn't make a lot of sense. This is a realistic scene right here. Um, and believe me, there, there are a lot of events. I mean, you, you probably could look it up on Google uh, where 
American patrol craft or um, electronic warfare, you know, EW assets, encounter various models of flankers over the ocean often. But anyway, the Su-30 SM um, really grew out of out of the the Su-30 uh, MKI and the Su-30 KN and kind of building blocks of you know Im improving that and um, this is the model that the Soviet, the Russians, sorry, designed for themselves. Seeing the effectiveness of the Su-30 MKI, they had then the Su-30 MKK, which came out of the Su-30K. There's a, like a whole, I mean, the roadmap for the, the Sukhoi, the flanker series is crazy. Um, but this, so this has been in service for a while. This is kind of a companion to the single seat Su-35S, but you know, we could do a whole, like I said, we can do a whole flanker family tree later on. But this is the first one I'm gonna work with. And I gotta say, I've already peeked in this box. Zvezda has really upped their game because the very first Zvezda models I looked at were basically the first flanker they did was a reboxing of an old Italeri flanker that quite honestly was not very good. Um, raised panel lines, soft detail. Um, and we're probably gonna, I think we're actually gonna, I'm gonna see that, we're gonna see that Italeri uh, flanker because when I do just an old school um, Su-27P, uh, you know, it works really well for that. Um, and and so the original, the original first Zvezda um, Su-27 and Su-33 was basically just remolded from the Italeri ones where they, they had just glue on canards. They didn't even have the right fuselage shape, but we'll talk about that later. But modern... Zvezda kits have really upped the game um, and really added a lot of detail and are, are pretty good actually, you know, especially in this scale. So inside the box, we've got all of our bags, all of our sprues. Uh, what's pretty cool is, look, we've got crews, crew figures, and they give you an option. You can have both of these crew members either standing and they even give you little bases to put them on, or they give you, um, pieces to have them seated in the jet, which is which is pretty nice. Now they are identical, okay? So it's not like you've got different options for different crew members, but it's nice that you can either build, you know, both of them kind of standing proudly next to the aircraft or seated in the cockpit, which is something you don't, you know, you don't see very often. That's, that's nice. So we've got those. Um, they give you a nice armament mix. And you know what I like about this um, versus a lot of the, you know, I just did the, Recently, the video on the 148 scale one from Kitty Hawk, which comes with no armament and then their armament set, which really doesn't give you the the tools you need to build a proper realistic armament load. They give you missiles and bombs to do a really realistic, fully loaded out uh, flanker, but we'll get there later. This time, let's start with decals and instructions because they're really nice. So you've got, uh, what, two or three different marking schemes on here. Um, this one, is the Kazakh, where is the Kazakhstan? There is the Kazakhstan uh, Air Force, Air Force, which is pretty cool. Um, you don't see Kazakhstan represented a whole lot, but this is a Kazakhstan's air defense, um, like air defense force, which looks very similar to the, the modern Russian eggplant scheme. We've got a Russian Air Force, um, you know, modern eggplant kind of scheme there. We've got a sky blue scheme for the Russian Air Force out of Kursk, which has a lot of history itself. Kursk, the place, not so much the base. We've got a, uh, a scheme of Su-30 SMs that are um, uh, Russian Air Force, but they are um, actually, so this is kind of a modern, um, you know, printed kit. These guys flew in Syria. So, you know, if you want to do like a modern actual saw combat Russian jet, this guy right here, which is pretty cool. And then we've got, like I said, the uh, Russian Naval Aviation one eggplant scheme. Now it says here, I, I guess this Cyrillic little marking here, it's uh, named Sevastopol, which reminds me immediately of the Alien Isolation game because that's Sevastopol station that you're on. Um, and I, that's all I could think of. But uh, I like the markings on the Russian Naval Aviation one and I might, I might do that one because um, it just looks cool. I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. There's going to be, in this little petting zoo, there's going to be plenty of flankers painted in the sky blue scheme. So, um, Although it would be nice to do a modern Syrian veteran. I don't know. But great. Um, you get all aspect painting schemes. Um, great marking. You know, easy to see decal placement on here. Um, and then Tamiya, of all things, Tamiya paint callouts. Go figure. 
Um, I have not seen that um, as the, the one and only paint callouts on a kit before. Now, if you use other stuff, I mean, there's plenty of resources online where you can look and find what the different, you know, paints in anything else are gonna be. Uh, there are um, Aiken paint sets that give you the exact Russian colors, or, you know, there are, uh, everybody, uh, um, Vallejo now has a flanker paint set, Hataka has a flanker paint set, um, or you can just buy colors individually, you know, but I mean, this is just, everything's marked in Tamiya, interestingly enough. The decals look great. They're nice and glossy, so put it over a gloss um, gloss background. Should be no problem. They feel very thin, okay? They're not gonna be big, thick, um, like very standing out apart from your, from your actual model. Um, everything is really nicely done. All the multicolor stuff is really well in register. They give you um, nice, really well-represented uh, instruments and controls for the cockpit. If you get like, you know, a magnifying thing and you look way down, you can even you can even see some of the Cyrillic uh, in some of these fine little decals. So really nicely done decals too. I'm uh, very happy with this. You get the dielectric panel markings for the verticals, which is really cool so you don't have to paint it. In fact, all the dielectric panels, you've got decals so you don't have to paint those fine little things. Um, you do have to do the leading edges on the wings, uh, but you know, at least they got all of these done for you, which makes it really, really easy. What I really like about this, and this helps me out with what I'm doing, is it's made to be built wheels down or wheels up. Now, they sell a separate um, base that you can get, but I'm not using it. I'm gonna make a, a nice wooden base. And again, you know, at the end of this video, I'm gonna put a, an end screen that you can click that shows how to make a really nice looking um, wooden base all on your own. Uh, it looks really nice, very cheap, very easy to do. And that's what I'm gonna mount these all on. But uh, the fact that it's made for wheels up, you know, some kits, they're not made to have the landing gear up and the gear bays uh, doors closed. And that means a lot of filling and sanding and it's kind of a pain. It's nice to know that this one does that right there. Um, so we've got, oh, nice, big, easy to see parts map. I love it. Uh, two weapon sprues, um, two, well, well, we'll just, we'll see this. Actually we get, oh, you know what is even better? Cool, we'll see this. So we got extra weapons, you know, for the air to ground because if this thing is naval, carrying air anti-ship missiles, we'll cover weapons later on. Um, as always, we start with the cockpit, but um, love when they do this. Some, some, some instructions do this, some don't. So when you're building, they shade in where you're gonna paint with the color callouts. Um, looks pretty, pretty simple. You know, again, I, have, I'm not built, I haven't built this one yet. Um, I've built the KN. Um, in 172, and I have that arriving soon. Now, the, the KN was also an older, basically, you know, a, a Su-27 UB with extras, um, and it was an older kit based on, I think, you know, Italeri molds, whatever, and then they threw extra parts in, raised panel lines, kind of softer detail. This is so much better than that, and I can tell already. Um, but it looks pretty, it looks pretty detailed. You know, you can, you know, they're, even to the point where they show you the interior detail on these, um, gear bay parts, so it looks like you won't have a lot of trouble assembling stuff, but we'll we'll see as we go um, I'm noticing too going through here separate leading edge and uh, Trailing edge so you can do those as you want in position your your slats and your flapper ons very nice Unfortunately, they still have the three-piece intakes those never fit together just perfect I mean, but you know what minimal minimal sanding and filling Love that they give you the ECM pods, the jamming pods to go on the wingtips. Awesome. Some kits don't do that, and sometimes you have to make your own. Um, but modern Russian stuff is probably gonna gonna carry those Durfum jamming pods because they can mess us up, and they know it. Uh, but yeah, the instructions look pretty good, very detailed. Um, you know, look at the detail on that landing gear assembly right there. Um, it's yeah, I like them. Of course, you know, we might find out as I'm building that. There are some issues, but we'll find out. Lots of weapons options, as as I said before. And we'll look at those. And two crew ladders, two crew ladders, multi-piece crew ladders that you can build if you uh, if you want to build your your people's standing outside. Now, of course, this is going to be positioned in flight. They even give you chalks for the wheels. Look at that. Great, awesome. Um, if you're going to use the flight stand, I'm sure that there's a little place you have to cut on the bottom fuselage. So I don't know yet if I'm going to have acrylic rod coming out of the exhaust or if I'm gonna have um, 
I don't know where the stand is. I was just working on this. This is for a commission build I'm doing, um, but with the, really the, the best way to secure it in is two little holes, um, and you can then either glue it on or you can make it removable. This is for the um, the YF4, uh, the VF4 um, Macross one uh, for a, a customer, but I'm not sure. That's the way I did the other ones in my old petting zoo. I'm not sure if that's the way I'm gonna do it or, or modernize it with acrylic rods coming out of the, the exhaust and secure it that way, but we'll see. Uh, but very similar to the way this one goes in. And, and then all the stencils. So the stencils are common to the different, you know, variants, which is why here you just have markings. But cool. And full stenciling for the weapons. Nice. This is, I'm really happy with this kit. And the price of the kit, I don't remember. It was really not as expensive as some of the other, you know, kits on the market these days. Uh, I'll put in text where I got it from and how much. But let's start looking at the pieces in the kit. And we start with oh, this big bag. And we've got, uh, the plastic is actually pretty crisp feeling, not soft and saggy. I like the feel of the plastic. You have a very, very minimal, I mean, minimal texture, a little, I can't describe it. It's not perfectly like glass smooth, but uh, you know, a little bit of primer on there maybe like a surfacer, will make that perfectly smooth. I, I doubt that anybody besides somebody seriously, seriously looking would even would even be able to tell. But great panel line detail, lots of details all over. They remembered to put the flare launchers on, chaff and flare dispensers. Um, and there's, you know, one of the craziest things is that the, the chaff and, and flare layout is different on every almost every model of the flanker. So, you know, if you're really an accuracy buff, you gotta check that out. They make decals for it, or you could, um, you know, just engrave it. Sometimes you have to uh, fill with, with putty, you know, the, the extra ones, but anyway. Uh, what I was talking about before with the old Italeri kits and a lot of the old canard flankers, they, you know, some of the earliest kits just gave you a regular body of the flanker and then you just glued canards on. But these, these better modern ones actually extend the, the fuselage there to where the canards attach instead of just you know, making it just like glue on canards and it's good. So here you actually have the extended strakes where the canards fit. And we'll see that. I'll compare it when I get the, the Su 30 KN kit in. Um, and uh, even though it was, it was never really a, a full production model, since it's the basis for some other ones, I wanna, I wanna put it in there. But also a nice, nicely done, you know, detail on the bottom. Um, yeah, here's that part that you would cut out if you want to put it on their little stand, which again, buy separately. Um, shallower detail on the bottom than on the top. I just knocked a piece off and I think it's a pedo tube, but we'll see. I'm not sure how well they fit together right now without taking off the sprues. I'm not sure, but I like what I'm seeing so far. Um, we have canopy rail. Yeah, here's the, the thing I knocked off. We'll figure out what that is in a second parts for the ladder, I'm sure, cockpit tub, air brake, more ladders, so seats modeled with separate seat cushions. I don't see that very often in a 172 scale fighter. Nothing, no detail on the instrument panel there, but decals. So this is all going to be closed up, canopy down, it's flying, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about that on this particular model. Because this is more to just display the plane and say, hey, look at this plane. This is uh, this goes in my threat library. We've got what looks like a correct flanker nose. You know, there are so many various things. You can buy so many aftermarket accessories to correct your flankers and make them just a little bit more accurate if you want. But everything here looks pretty good. So I'm looking for flash and I'm, I'm looking for uh, ejector pin marks. And I'm not, you know, the ejector pin mark problem, I, I'm not seeing a lot of it on any of this, really. A um, little bit on the cockpit tub there, but of course not where anything's going to show. We've got the faintest little one over there on the, the back of the canopy, um, bracing and railing. Uh, but none on the, on the, you know, where, so they knew that the air brake, if you model it up, it's going to show nothing there. Um, nothing. I'm not even sure what this is, to tell you the truth right now. Nothing there. Um, nothing on the gear doors, gear bay. I mean, 
virtually flash free, ejector mark free of anywhere where you might see it. Little teeny tiny parts. I gotta figure out what part I knocked off. I'm sure it's sitting in there right now, um, but we'll find it. Launch rails look good. Lots of detail on the launch rails. That's awesome. Um, you know, and these are little things that most people probably won't even pick up on, but when you paint it well and you put a panel line wash on there, you know, it's the little details that matter to me. Um, little bit ejector marking on the insides of these intakes, but nobody's going to see that, you know, in the end. That's going to be way back by where your compressor goes. Again, a little bit there, but way back on the inside where nobody's going to see it. Great detailing on the sides of the intakes. I, and again, virtually flash free. I don't see really anything. Your wingtip ECM pods have pretty good detail there. One day I should do a whole video on Durfum jamming and why we hate it, but I don't think I can get into that on, on YouTube and exactly how effective it is. But the good news is they can jam fighters or they can jam the command and control radar, but usually not both at once. So good looking pieces there. Now we've got our upper wings and our verticals. Personally, I like the shape of the old, the old school shorter vertical stabilizers that have the little angle in them. I think they look cool, but that's just the rule of cool. That doesn't mean they work better. Um, another air brake. So I don't know which one goes on this particular model, but nice work on the verts. Wing tops look good. You know, not too not too rigid, but you know, if you need to play with it a little bit to get it glued down, it'll, it'll do that for you. Um, two versions of leading edge slats. I, again, I don't know which is which and which fits where, but we'll find out. We will find out. Um, everything looks pretty nice here. Now, where are you, little piece? You know, I'm thinking this little this little piece right here is what broke off, and I don't know what this thing is. I don't know if this is an actual piece or what it is, but I'm gonna save it right here. If I can't find anything else. Oh wait, here it is. This thing right here. And again, I have no I have no idea what this thing is right now. It's so little and tiny. I'm gonna put this right back in the box because I will lose this immediately. Uh, we'll find out what that is. Um, let's look at our clear parts before we look at some weapons. Hmm. Interesting. Wow, look at that. That is interesting. So instead of, I guess, I'm guessing what they did to save uh, some time and money, you've got two canopies and then you glue them to, I've got to look in the instructions for this because that is, do you glue them both to the canopy rails? Like, so they, they could do like a a single seater and a double seater on one on one sprue like this? Is that, a, let's, let's see. Let's take a look. So we're going to use this front windscreen and you know what there is a little you can see where there's a little uh shaded area there these need a little dip in future they're kind of thick but they also i feel like they got some mold release on them or something they got a little bit of texture there for your landmarking for your masking uh, if there's right now if there's any if there's any low point in this in this kit i'd say it's it's the, the clear parts um they are pretty clear when you put them up to stuff, but they're a little bit thick. I think after a dip in some future or something, they'll look a lot better. I am very curious though, how they go on here with the, um... yeah, so there it is. You're gonna glue both of these to the canopy rail. And I'm sure they did that so that they could produce a single seat and a two seater with one piece here. Interesting. There's, you know, when you're holding stuff right up to it, there's, minimal distortion when you look through it though there's, there's a little bit of waviness distortion but i'm not going to complain i mean 172 scale low classic um not bad we can make them we can make them look a little bit more crystal clear give them a little wash and some mild dish soap and then dip them in gauzier future i'm sure they'll look a little bit better now let's look at bombs missiles things that go boom we also have by the way there's like four different kinds of uh, exhaust nozzles in this, which we'll just figure out what they use. So what I like is they've got very accurately shaped AA-10s. Now, what do we, now again, I, I've said this a lot of times, I speak NATO. I don't speak Russian missile designation as well as I should. So what do we call these, R-27s? 
uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I don't know. Um, but so in NATO speak, the, these are the correct missiles for, for a late model flanker like this. So we've got the AA-10 Chucks and we've got the AA-10 Duck, um, the Delta and the, and the Charlie. We don't refer to them as Charlies and Deltas. We've got 10 Alphas, Bravos, Chucks, and Ducks. And I have no idea why, but that's the way it is. And if you say Charlies and Deltas, you get laughed at. These are radar guided, uh, semi-active radar homing. Uh, this is infrared. And the concept of a medium range infrared guided missile is cool. It's got a lot of restrictions and that's again, topic for another, for another video. Um, but you know, a late model flanker would not have the shorter range missiles. There's just no reason for it. Well, we've got a lot. I mean, that's the thing. We've got 10 hard points on this flanker, so you can put a lot of missiles on there. So in, you know, I, the only thing is it only comes with this two, only, only two AA 12s, which I believe I'm going to hope I don't screw this up. The R 77s. Um, please tell me they did they say it for you in here? No, they don't. Again, I'm sorry. I apologize. My my NATO, my, my Russian is, I, I know all my NATO designations. So the AA-12s, you know, a uh, late model flanker could carry, you know, more of them. Um, however, if we're doing a naval aviation version and we're doing it loaded for bear to like go after targets, you know, conceivably we could do only two AA-12s, um, you know, a couple Alamos and then maybe a pair of archers. Um, the Everything is in really good scale with with each other, though. So, and very detailed, you know, as these missiles go. A lot of times, they just make these missiles a straight tube, and they don't take into account any of the difference in body width or anything, so I, I really am happy with that. Lots of different launch rail options for the different weapons. Um, now, in this package, we have... So, um, we've got... The AS-17, which comes in in two main flavors that we're worried about. There's the AS-17 um, Krypton anti-radiation missile, uh, and then there's the AS-17 anti-ship missile. And of course, naval aviation, it would carry both. Um, so they give you extra AS-17s so that you can uh, fit it up for whatever. You can have both. You could be hunting ships and radars all at once. Uh, whether it's, you know, Russian Air Force um, suppression of any air, air defense, or we're uh, naval aviation um, hunting down, you know, weapons control radars on ships, or we're just hunting down ships. And then you've got options for other guided missiles it can carry. And of course, like all good Russian planes, you can just have some unguided rocket pods, big unguided rockets, um, or small unguided rockets. Russians love unguided rocket pods. Um, it's a very Russian philosophy, just brute force. Um, so, all sorts of armament that you could throw on this thing from a pure uh, air superiority loadout. Although I definitely want more of these guys if I was a Russian and I was doing that active radar versus semi-active radar. But nice, uh, nice missiles, nice armament loads. But everything looks really good in this kit. I'm excited to do this kit. Unfortunately, just like some other stuff, this is a project I'm very passionate about doing and I can't wait to do. But it kind of has to wait until I have some responsibilities to do. I've got uh, some commission works that need to be done. Um, I've got some friend building that needs to be done. Um, and then I can get to work working on my own petting zoo, which, I mean, I, I am really excited about doing the petting zoo work. And there's going to be, when it's all said and done, probably about 20 different models in the petting zoo. I have to buy shelves. Just how do they how do they do this? Um, there's going to be probably about 20 different aircraft in my petting zoo when it's all built and I've got all the aircraft in there. Some of them, um, some of them currently in service. Some will be out of service. Some will be former threats. Um, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my petting zoo. Um, some, some of them will be, you know, I'm going to do different versions of the same plane just in different in different finishes, different countries, different threats. Um, like some of them will be different models of the same aircraft, you know, different variants. Um, so it's gonna be, if I'm really gonna recreate what I built at Tyndall, it's gonna be a lot. So This is a good kit though. I can't wait to show you one of, you know, if you're not familiar with Zvezda, one of the older kits though, to show you how far they've come. Originally Zvezda was, you know, they did old, they were cheaper. They were a cheaper option for some of these kits because they just kind of reboxed some older, not so great molded kits. And 
when I was not worried about extreme detail, I just needed a good representation, they work out really well. So, but you know, these, these newer kits are great. They're really well done. They're making their own molds. They're doing really good stuff. Um, so, they even have their own paint line too. So Zvezda and Tamiya. Here's some pictures on the box of finished aircraft. They chose, well look, they've got a, they chose the Naval Aviation one, which is kind of cool because it's camo on the bottom. Eggplant on the top. That's like the mullet of aircraft camouflage. So this will be cool, and I'll be getting to this as soon as I can. Um, we've got this guy coming in too, and we've got um, uh, suit. Oh, we've got so much. I'm not even going to tell you all the different plans that are going into this. But this is going to be a long series, a long series over time, um, and I can't wait to get them all done. So anyway, cool. If you have built this kit and you've got want to chime in with any uh, any cool info about it, any tips, anything that you think the viewing audience should know about this particular kit and this aircraft, please do. Please let us know in the comments. In any case, for all of you building your stuff at home, keep building them, build them well, and I'll be back again with another video, hopefully really exciting stuff, pretty soon.